Welcome to Talk South Asian to Me. My name is Michelle. And my name is Anusha. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central and hear us react to each other's stories about mental health and growing up in different South Asian households. And remember, this podcast is not therapy. Engage with what feels entertaining and resonates with you and leave what doesn't. All right. You ready for our letter O topic reveal? Ready. Drum roll, please. <laughs> um, it is da 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 overthinking. <laughs> overthinking. Something we all do from time to time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very, very relevant, I feel like, in my life. And I'm excited <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm so ready. But first, before we get into our experiences, we'll get into a little bit mm-hmm. of background, defining and examples and origins. So I'm going to first list my sources that I use for my research, then we'll get to, we'll get into it. Mm-hmm. So I used two Psychology Today articles, one titled, Are You an Overthinker? by Dr. Davis, and the other, Three Origins of Overthinking by Dr. Leonard. And then mm-hmm. another article online titled how to stop overthinking by amy morin who is a social worker Uh okay so first we're going to define overthinking what Mm -hmm. is your definition of overthinking anusha uh for me i think overthinking is when you have like similar or same thoughts about like one topic or one situation just over and over and over and over again and you just can't get it out of your head Mm -hmm. exactly and you over dissect it (laughs) yep yep you're on point it refers to the process of repetitive unproductive thought Mm -hmm. and another quick definition i found was that involves thinking that is not getting us anywhere and is not helpful to us Mm -hmm. so if you're stuck thinking about the same issue over and over and over again like what you said but you're not coming to a solution you may be overthinking Mm-hmm. Okay. And a person can overthink about a past event. So like an example, like if something embarrassing happened or an interaction yeah. they have had with a person or a mistake they made, they can overthink mm-hmm. about that. They can overthink about the present, like for overthinking about their current circumstances, like the current relationships yeah. they have, a current career that they have. Mm-hmm. Or they can a person can also overthink about the future, <clears throat> like – that kind of falls into the category of worrying. Um, right. You're just think, constantly thinking about what's going to happen next or what's going to happen in the future. Mm-hmm. And literally, when I was reading all these, I was like, check, check, check. I've overthought about <laughs> past, present, and future. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ultimate overthinker of the year. <laughs> I love that. And I, I concur. That is definitely you. It's also me. I feel like I it's a like, lot of wow. us. Like, wow, that's a lot of overthinking. Like when you read about something yeah. and you're like, oh, it breaks down to three categories or whatever it is. And then you're like, oh, I'm all of it. You're like, it's just an epiphany. Like, wow. Worst yeah. case scenario. I'm just kidding. But still. <laughs> sometimes. You say you're kidding, but uh, sometimes. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> and then research shows that overthinking harms our decision-making processes. Did you know that? Mm. I can believe it. Yeah. They're like, like, it's interesting. Like, it interferes with our decision making abilities, which is makes I sense. I can see right? that. Are, yeah. Are yeah. Especially kind of like, with- yeah. Playing with what? Your emotions or thoughts. Yeah. Like, that makes a lot of sense to me because it's like you might start off knowing what you want and what you feel like doing, mm-hmm. but then you overanalyze it so much that maybe at this point you're like I don't even know and you just choose something (laughs) and that something might not even be what you want or need right and some more research that I wish to share was that future focus worry or overthinking so remember the three categories Mm -hmm. we talked about so the future type of overthinking has been associated with anxiety so it's not directly like cause and effect related right but there's an association like People who tend to worry about the future also tend to experience anxiety. Mm -hmm. And research also shows that when you change your worry thoughts or future-focused overthinking, it can reduce anxiety. So there's that relation as well. Mm -hmm. 
Is that when you work on reducing those thoughts coming over and over again, you can reduce your anxiety. Yeah. And I feel like I felt I've done that before. I felt that affected that before. So part of that research, <laughs> part of that subject, <laughs> that research, I feel like. Example. We've got a walking example. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So let's get into signs of overthinking. So mm-hmm. if someone's wondering if they're overthinking, these are just some of the signs that you might experience or notice. Mm-hmm. Um, inability to think about anything else. So all you think about is that situation, interaction, circumstance, whatever it is you're overthinking mm-hmm. about, that's all you're thinking about and you can't think yeah. about anything else. Mm-hmm. You're unable to relax. So can't relax. Constantly feeling worried or anxious. Fixating on things outside of your control. Mm. Feeling mentally exhausted. Having a lot of negative thoughts. Oh, this one's my favorite. I've done this mm. a lot. Replaying a situation or experience in your mind over and over again. <laughs> oh, yeah. A hundred percent. The number of times I'm like in the shower and it's like, wow, I'm playing the scenario over and over again. It's just yeah, hilarious to me. I could have done, done this. I could have said times. this. What did they mean when they said um, this? Another oh, yeah. sign is second guessing your de- decisions. So always second hmm. guessing your like decisions that you made. And then thinking uh-huh. of all the worst case scenarios. Mm. Um, and check, then, check, check. exactly. And then <laughs> I wanted to break it down for a little bit further. So like mm-hmm. if a person is overthinking on a problem, like a specific issue or problem mm-hmm. or conflict, there's like certain types of overthinking related to that. So there's like the mm-hmm. all or nothing black and white thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Like they, or ca- c- catastrophizing. I'm sure uh-huh. you're familiar with that term, right? Think That means thinking that things are worse than they actually are. Mm. So for example, you might fear that you failed a test and then it leads to worry you, it leads to you worrying about failing the class, which then leads failing school, not getting a degree, mm. not being able to find a job. I call yeah. this spiraling for myself. Like you're just <laughs> going down this constant spiral and this down really deep mm. hole. <laughs> That's yeah. how I look at it. all the like worst <laughs> possible scenarios. Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And then another type of overthinking when it relates to thinking overthinking on a problem is overgeneralizing. So instead mm-hmm. of accepting that different outcomes are possible, you might think that certain things will always happen or never happen. It's the same thing. Like the all or nothing black and white mm. thinking relates to the overgeneralizing that you're always yeah. just thinking like broad. And saying this mm-hmm. this one single event represents all the events or all the interactions. Right. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Any thoughts about that so far? That all makes sense. And I've definitely done all of them. Check, check, check. <laughs> I know. Same. <laughs> hmm. And we'll dig into why. I feel like I, I would love to hear that too from you. But I'm going to share that too <laughs> as well. Yeah. But- the little bit more pieces of research I wanted to share was the origins of overthinking, which I thought was interesting. Oh, the why, yeah. right? Like, why yeah. over? Why does overthinking occur? Mm-hmm. So one reason um, that this author, Dr. Leonard, shared was that if you're overthinking about relationships and you're a person that cares deeply about the person in your life, like you mm-hmm. deeply care about that person, that can cause overthinking. Mm. Okay. Sure. Um, and then say if a person is going through a new phase in their life, like moving, starting a new relationship, starting a new chapter, a big event that's happening in life, that can also ignite some overthinking, like you're going through a change, you're going through a different phase in your life. And mm-hmm. the author mentioned that sometimes when you're a person is going through a new phase in their life or new event, it can cause like at night, dark, crazy worries that can come up, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Like when I feel like I've experienced that where I'm like laying in bed and before I go to sleep and like all these thoughts come up. Yeah. And so that's one thing as well. I didn't know that was like a thing that every a lot of people can experience. I thought it was only yeah. exclusive to me. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle is special. She's the only one allowed right? to do this. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I just thought like, oh, I'm the only one who gets like sometimes dark thoughts at night yeah. or like overthinking about that you know yeah so, i mean we don't we don't think like those mm-hmm. like you know quote unquote negative things or things that people just do we kind of do feel 
you know, it's normal for us to be like, I think I'm just the weird one. Nobody else can be like this. Yes. Yes. When, That's yeah. why it's important to talk about it. Normalize mm-hmm. it. Normalize mm-hmm. it. Love it. Talk about Asian <laughs> to me. <laughs> Shameless plug. You're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now the next section of what I wanted to share about overthinking was how mm-hmm. to overcome it. So there's like some tips mm. that the social worker, one of the authors of the, of the article, um, how to know when you're overthinking and how to overcome it. Some uh-huh. things that a person can do is distract yourself. Yeah. Um, challenging negative thoughts, thoughts that are not facts. I feel like I've used that tool before where I'm always like asking myself like, okay, why do I think that? Why? Why? What's the proof? Right? Challenging mm-hmm. it. Working on interpersonal skills mediate or meditating i don't know why i said mediating meditating (laughs) yeah practicing self-acceptance and then of course Uh professional support Mm. yeah yeah i love it so now that was a little bit of general background of overthinking and i was trying to do some research when it comes to overthinking directly related to south asians and south asian americans Mm -hmm. and i've to, be, to my surprise, actually, I didn't find much. Like, I didn't find much research or mm-hmm. articles on that. Like, there was a lot mm-hmm. of, like, articles and stuff that mentioned overthinking, but the overarch theme was, like, different topics, yeah. like guilt that can lead to overthinking or, you know, there's, like, yeah. the, the effect of overthinking. But specifically overthinking, I didn't find much, but I was doing some brainstorming and I was like, why – why is it sometimes a thing in South Asian households? Um, why was it in my South Asian household? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I feel like it gets reinforced, especially I think it was reinforced in my family, right? Like constantly tiptoeing around the reactions mm-hmm. and expectations of elders, which mm-hmm. we talked about in previous episodes. Oh, yeah. But I did find an Instagram reel okay. by um, Garang- Garanga Das. Do you know who that is? Uh, not ringing a bell. I don't know if I'm like saying the name correctly, but it's um, a monk who posts a lot of different influential content and videos. And mm-hmm. this reel was specifically about overthinking. So I was like, oh. and you know, it was so funny. I wasn't even like looking for it. It came on like my, <laughs> like just general that. like scrolling. And I was like, yes, I need to save it. This is awesome. <laughs> and it was so like, the like, he said it so like beautifully and put it very beautifully mm-hmm. in like the few seconds of this video. He said, overthinkers need people who love to over clarify. Mm-hmm. Overthinkers are constantly hurting, feeling insecure, thinking about the worst possible situations. So they need trust. And once mm-hmm. they gain it, they will over love. And I was oh, like, I love oh. that. I know. I was like, it's beautiful. So well said. That's true, right? Like, Mm. whatever response overthinking is to whatever you know trigger or trauma that that person experienced, like it's. I think that's very relevant. Where yeah, like overthinkers can Mm -hmm. be hurting or feeling insecure, and that's Mm -hmm. why it's important to provide that reassurance and over clarifying. But like once that trust is there, like you're like constantly like like over loving, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. Once that trust is like really built, established and like so, yeah. become a norm. That was my research. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts or anything to add? Um, hmm. Well, nothing in reaction to what you're saying other than I love that reel. That's amazing. Yes. What a beautiful quote. As far as the research goes, like that, that all makes sense to me. And I did think about too, like, and we'll get to it in my story, but I did think about too, like, how do I handle when I like overthink Mm -hmm. and like when I'm overthinking, like, where does this come from? Yes. So if there's anything I would add, I would say that the way I see overthinking is that it tends to stem from when we're feeling like really stressed, when we're feeling really anxious, when we're worried about something, when we have like insecurities, like low self-esteem about something. Mm And then as you were talking about, um, you had said something about like the origins of overthinking Mm -hmm. and like it made me think it's about control. Mm -hmm. It's about control. If we, we obviously like, you know, it's a very human thing that we want to have everything in a neat box. We want to be comfortable, but 
not knowing something is uncomfortable inherently. And so it's about yeah. control, this overthinking of like, okay, well, since I don't have control over it, since I don't know what to expect, I got to catastrophize. I got to all or nothing. I got to overgeneralize. I got to yeah. do my best to like know what's going to happen and like control the situation. So I'm going to think of all the scenarios and all the avenues mm. off of that scenario and all the, oh my goodness, it's about control. That makes sense to me. That makes sense. I wonder if all overthinkers have control issues. I do. I wonder if other people do. <laughs> yeah, I do too. But we're working on it, right? One step at a time. Yes. <laughs> we're working on it. We're not perfect. No, we're I, think, on it. <laughs> I think you're spot on. I think control makes sense to me too. Where mm-hmm. when you're, when you, I feel like I, I'll talk, I'll get into more of this in my story too, but like I tend to overthink when I feel like I'm lost at control. Yeah. I don't have control of the situation, so I'm overthinking to gain control or figure out how I can gain control, Mm. which is so interesting. (laughs) Exactly. Okay. Okay. So you ready for my take on it? I'm ready. Okay. So like I mentioned already many times, I find myself Mm -hmm. overthinking a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is definitely one of the things I'm working on actively. Yeah. Um, so I have like a couple examples, but I wanted to share one. Ex- I have a lot of examples, but I wanted to, um, <laughs> share a few that come into mind and stand out when it okay. comes to my experience with overthinking. So, uh, like a few of these examples include like, you know, after a job interview, after a difficult conversation with a family member or friend, I would sometimes mm-hmm. constantly would always find myself replaying the situation in my head over and yeah. over and over again, trying to yeah. figure out what the other person thought, like trying to assume, or how how would the interaction be <laughs> if I had done or said right. something differently? Mm. Which is like now, like now I'm reflecting on it. So I'm like, oh, like you know, I wish I could tell a little old Michelle, like you can't change the situation, you know, like it's done, mm. like. But that that was my response, and sometimes that is still my response till this day. Yeah. Um, but but biggest. I feel like source of overthinking for me is like when I make a mistake, like I would Mm. immediately start overthinking immediately. Mm. And I think this behavior was modeled for me during my childhood. So like my mom Mm. tends to share that behavior as well. And I think I picked it up. It was Mm. also reinforced in my childhood. I always thought overthinking is normal. It is a response to constantly having to be on and catering to others. Yeah. Um, so like, I think it was just normalized in my household too. So I was like, oh, this is normal, like constantly overthinking and making sure I can find control in situations or make sure everybody loves me no matter what, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) but exactly. Yeah. So one example is when at work one time I made a mistake in communication with a coworker and even after having a very mature and satisfying conversation with that coworker, we resolved the conflict. I went back to my office and thought about the conversation for hours, mm-hmm. for hours. The coworker even reassured me multiple times, but I could not help it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was also recent. So like, you know, I tried to reflect on why in this best case situation where the conflict was resolved, right? Like I got reassurance. Mm-hmm. Like, why was I still overthinking? It was like, yeah. I was very, not frustrated myself, but I was like, I need to understand why I'm like this. Like, I don't like it. Like, Mm -hmm. I should be okay, you know? But, and I thought about it and I still think about it. And I think I could be wrong, but I think it's related to my people pleasing tendencies, right? Mm -hmm. And the control, like, you know, I feel like that's when you're, when you, when I make a mistake, I lose control of the other person being pleased by me or like, that doesn't sound right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> like, they like me. Making so sure, yeah. I, lost, yeah. I lost that control, right? Mm, super and insightful. So, right? I lost that control. Mm. So now I'm overthinking about it because I want them to like me again. Yeah. That makes a and lot so, of sense. Yeah. I'm like, woohoo. Like, why was I like, thinking about this uh, mm. podcast, like writing this up too? I was like, oh, like. I'm also discovering this about myself more and more. I love that. (laughs) Um, And making a mistake and causing someone else to be upset with me was the opposite of what me, the people pleaser, wanted, the people pleaser in me wanted. Yeah, right. 
So because of the environment I grew up in, I learned quickly as a young girl that someone's emotions toward me defined how they felt about me. And I think we've talked about this in previous mm-hmm. podcasts, right? And I determined mm-hmm. and that determined whether they liked me or not overall. So like, mm-hmm. right, the black and white thinking, like that one interaction yeah. overgeneralized to like mm-hmm. how, how their overall approval of me. So yeah. I learned at a very young age to use others' emotions as a marker for their approval of me. Yeah. Even though wow. emotions are unstable. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> and have, have nothing necessarily to do with how you feel about someone overall. Yes. Emotions are temporary. Yes. And when and it's true, like you're right, like the emotions shouldn't define like mm-hmm. the approval that other people have over yeah. me or what, whatever, like, you know. Mm-hmm. And someone's emotions can be a result of a single event. And emotions change all the mm-hmm. time. Like you said, it's temporary. Yeah. And I think that has to do with me growing up in a very emotionally reactive and charged home. And I think that fueled my overthinking. Mm -hmm. I think overthinking became my survival tactic growing up. Mm. Like if I we talked about previously, you know, this could also be considered a trauma response to overthink in a way that okay, if I'm if I'm making sure that I'm considering all possibilities, then I'm making sure I'm making the best possible choice so I don't make (laughs) a situation worse or I don't hurt anyone's feelings or you know, basically like tiptoeing around other people. Exactly. Like I think growing up, I taught myself, I learned, right? That yeah. if I overthink, I will be more mm-hmm. likely to be more careful of not receiving yeah. negative emotions, which in turn meant that I had my parents' approval and love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So. <laughs> Mind blow. <Right? laughs> I mean, like I said, like I feel like I'm still figuring this out. Like I feel like I'm still working on this actively, but yeah, it's true. I feel like this is that was so so slowly, insightful. Yes, me slowly discovering myself. I feel like this is my version of journaling mm-hmm. sometimes. <laughs> our podcast, I love that so much. <laughs> right, I it's like our uh, weekly journals. I love right, it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was wow heavy, but that's kind of my thoughts and journey with overthinking. Mm. I love that, and. Probably uh, my story is going to be about the same, (laughs) more or less. Overthinking, overthinkers perhaps are pretty similar brand of breed, maybe. (laughs) Um, I did want to say before I get started on my story, though, that um, something that I, something like that came up for me immediately when we talked about doing this podcast and overthinking was this particular thing that I say to my clients all the time that somebody had said to me a long time ago, which is sometimes thoughts are just thoughts. They're not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. They're just there. And there might not even be your Mm -hmm. voice. It could be things you picked up around you. You know, you've heard somewhere, you've seen somewhere. So all the thoughts that you have aren't necessarily even yours. So some thoughts can just be thoughts that you look at and you ask, is that mine? Is that true to me? And if not, like, just let it pass like a cloud. Mm -hmm. It's not yours to hold on to. Yeah. And like that really just came up for me in like such vividness when we were talking about overthinking of like, sometimes we have all of these like thoughts and our overthinking, catastrophizing all or nothing. And it's like, Mm -hmm. I wonder how much time would be cut short if we just started with that, that idea right there of not all of these are true. We don't need to like, think about all of these things as ours. I wonder how much time we would save, or I would save, I should say. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So note to future self, Nisha, remember, Mm -hmm. not all thoughts are yours. Exactly. Release them. (laughs) I like the cloud reference. I like watching it. That I also use, I think I shared this with you, like the stream, yeah. putting it on a leaf mm-hmm. and watching it go away. One way river. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Just like <laughs> watch it stream away from you further and yes. further. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So as I was, um, you know, thinking about like my examples of overthinking and like much like yourself, I can say I can think of a lot, but I will share one. <laughs> um, for me. I feel like in the past, especially less so now, because I'm more like secure and like confident in my friendships and like who I am and taking my space. But in the past, especially the biggest source of 
this overthinking for me was friends. Um, mm-hmm. So like anytime I did anything that might make a friend upset or mm-hmm. that wasn't what my friend wanted, like especially my people pleasing like really showed up in that friendship um, arena. And so like I would overthink a lot in terms of friendships. Mm-hmm. So I'll give you an example. One time. Okay. Um, and this wasn't even that long ago. This was a couple of years back. <laughs> okay. The situation basically was that a friend was visiting um, college town and like I hadn't seen her in a long time. She wanted to like hang out. She wanted to visit with me. But I was actually I had plans that weekend to go up and visit family. Okay. And so I was really upset like that that person would be really upset at me for like mm. not prioritizing them or, you know, being like, well, I never – get to see you but like this is the weekend that you're going away like it's not even an important event like can you skip it like I was kind of overthinking like what they might be thinking Mm -hmm. um so I had a lot of those thoughts of like well they're gonna be upset they're gonna think that I don't prioritize them they're gonna think that I'm weird to you know prioritize family over friends especially at this age or you know they're gonna stop Mm -hmm. asking me to hang out with them or they'll get mad at me and they'll stop talking to me or they're gonna think I don't want to hang out with them just like all of these just like thoughts that were just pure speculation that I didn't even have um, any basis for. Like, I I will say I've had a friend or two in the past, like who probably would have thought that, but this friend had no, has never shown me that indication ever. No evidence that this friend would be that way. But I've had friends in the past who had done that enough that I was right here overgeneralizing the situation to all friends, right? Um, so obviously like that made me feel really stressed. That made me feel really worried and like anxious. And like I said, like I was so insecure at that time about like my friendships and like the stability and like trust of like friendships are good. Like they're solid that I wasn't really allowing myself to have healthy boundaries. And Mm -hmm. I often felt really, really guilty, you know, and uncertain of what was the right thing to do in these situations. Mm -hmm. so back then I um obviously I still communicated it you know like "Mm, I'm so sorry like I I really want to be there but yeah I've already like made these plans and I don't want to flake on them and like this is still important but hey like you're important to me too and like let's like I took the initiative to say like let's plan something together and like I can come visit you on like this weekend how does that sound yeah you know basically taking the initiative to do all that and of course, it turned out fine. But I had this yeah. whole emotional roller coaster going through, like, what should I say? What should I text her back? And like, what should I, you know, what am I going to say? Is she going to be okay? It's just like this whole yeah. emotional roller coaster for something yeah. that turned out great. And like, she didn't even. She was like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But now I know, a couple of years removed from the situation, mm-hmm. I know how I would handle it now. Mm-hmm. Um more in like a systematic way and like some of the things that I did then I would still do now but I would get ahead of it a little bit quicker you know so for example like now if I were to have those thoughts I would catch those thoughts and I would ask myself hey like are these thoughts true you're thinking she's going to be upset at you is that true like do you have evidence has she ever done that in the past Mm -hmm. you're thinking she's going to never ask you to hang out again is that true has she ever done that you know just kind of like getting ahead of recognizing that these are the thoughts that are creating some of the feelings for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And the the biggest thing, especially which I love asking myself and like always tell clients to do is put in like put this friend or some other friend in your shoes. If they were in the situation and you weren't in part of the situation, you were a friend looking in on the situation. What would you tell the friend going through these thoughts and emotions? I would never say to her, like, yeah, she's going to be totally pissed. (laughs) No, I wouldn't. Yeah. I would probably say, like, listen, you're allowed to have these boundaries. And, like, if Mm -hmm. you want to show her you care, like, show her you care in a different way. If you're worried about how she's going to take it, talk to her. You know, like, basically taking yourself out of that perception for a minute and seeing another point of view. Mm -hmm. I think that's always helpful, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, like challenging um, those negative thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. And on top of that, I think, too, is like not just being able to address all of these thoughts that are just dysregulated and like not really serving you, but also taking a minute to like regulate your emotions. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. 
whether that's, as you said earlier, meditating, taking deep breaths, whether that's going for a walk, even sometimes, you know, when you're anxious, you have like this anxious energy, right? In your body, Mm -hmm. go release that energy, go for a walk. Yeah. Um, And sometimes in some situations, maybe like you really can't release it, then at least try distracting yourself, you know? Yeah. Whether that's through talking to somebody, watching TV, reading a book, whether that's, I don't know, doing hard manual labor, (laughs) (laughs) whatever it is, like distract yourself. Yeah. And then once you've regulated your thought, you've regulated your emotions, then you can think about, hey, what's in my control here? What can Mm -hmm. I do to make the situation okay? Um, And I think what I've really like stumbled upon lately in my late 20s that I'm fully embracing now is Mm -hmm. radical honesty. And what I mean by that is if you think that somebody has a certain fear or you think somebody's going to think something, why beat around the bush? Why speculate? Just get in front of it and call it out and say like, hey, I'm really afraid that you're going to think that. I'm flaking on you and I want you to know I'm not. Yeah. Or, hey, I'm yeah. really afraid that you're not going to think I prioritize you and I, I want you to know I do prioritize you. It's just that this plan yeah. was already made. You know, like yeah. instead of holding that for Keeping yourself in. and then feeling mm-hmm. all like icky about it and like never having that question ever answered, would this person do this? Would this person think this? Get ahead of it and just like call it out. Honest, radical yeah. honesty. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And it also yeah. helps the other person not wonder like why mm-hmm. like, you're it not. It stops like, the overthinking yeah. in its yeah. tracks yeah. basically. Yes. The cycle. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I love it. <laughs> yes. I um, love it. Yeah. So that, that was my story of like what I did and like it turned out well, thankfully. But if I could go back, I would like have myself like think it through I would have myself mm-hmm. feel it through and then I would decide on what to do mm-hmm. I still think it worked out so it's fine good yeah. job little Anusha <laughs> Yay, but I, I was also thinking about thank you I was also <laughs> thinking about like in general um like what are the things if I could put them all together on how to handle these situations so I I had a list and I want to add to some of the things that you had already mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to call it the ones you already mentioned, but I'll just kind of add on to it. Okay. I think a really big thing, like I said earlier, was just like noticing your thoughts and like mm-hmm. you reframing them. You had said to challenge them. Absolutely. I would take it a step further after you challenge and recognize they might not be true, like actively reframe them to something that seems more accurate. Yes. Um, Focusing on what's give, in your control. Oh, can sorry. Can you give what? an example of that? The reframing. Yeah. So, let's say the thought was, um, um, what should we use? Let's say the thought is, they're never going to ask me to hang out again if I say no this time. Mm-hmm. You can challenge that thought and be like, "Is that thought really true? Like, do you have any evidence to back that up?" And I could be like, "Okay, no, it's probably not." I would take the reframe to another step and saying um, they would probably maybe hesitate and be like, hmm, I wonder if she wants to hang out or not. Yeah. Let me ask and see. Like it wouldn't be a one time you say no and like, boom, they're never going to ask you again. The more accurate, realistic reframe is if you consistently do that, yeah, they might come to that conclusion. Yeah. Right. But more if realistically, you're honest and say, I really yeah. do want to hang out. Yeah. I just can't. You can avoid I'm it. Studying or I'm doing whatever. Like I have work or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other thing is focus on what's in your control. Mm-hmm. Because, like we talked about, <laughs> overthinking is all about control. Control. So, to break <laughs> it apart, all of this overthinking loop. Come back to, okay, what can I control then? Yes. Um, and then I'm a really big fan of, like, when I have too much happening up here in my head, I'm a really big fan of, like, like full-on, like, brain dump. Put it down, pen to paper, slow down, and write out all of these thoughts, write out all of the worries, write out all yeah. of the situations that's running up here. Because, one, that forces you to slow down your overthinking when you have to write it out. And, two... 
if you can just get all of this like icky energy out of here onto yeah. like the physical self, like you can see on pen to paper. And it's sometimes easier to be like, that's silly. That would never happen. Yeah. <laughs> but it's harder yeah. to do that when it's stuck in your head. Exactly. That makes um, sense. So journaling me. for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not really a big fan of journaling, I suppose you can talk it out with somebody else. Yes. <laughs> Externally processing it. Exactly. And the last thing I'll say was um, overthinking is a very mind-oriented thing. Yes, it is. And if you're stuck in your mind and you're stuck in these loops, what you need is to ground yourself back in your body so you can get out of your head. So. Yeah. Like you said earlier, that could look like meditation, that can look like breathing, that can literally look like you sitting on the floor, touching <laughs> the carpet, touching the you know hardwood floor, touching grass, cement, whatever it is, and like focusing on like the five senses, being in your body instead of your yes. mind. Yes, I like that as well said, being yeah. in your body instead of your mind. Because the mind sometimes can be dangerous, such as overthinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Loves to think, think, think. <laughs> yes. I feel like yeah. I, I like mm. you sharing those strategies. I feel like I've, through therapy and work too, like I've created this like toolbox and a lot of those, these tools like you shared and I can add to yeah. it what you've shared. I feel like I learned some new ones today. Um, I can add to it and take it with me. I love it. <laughs> and take it out, with, take each tool out. And then I love that like there's multiple tools right multiple options because it's mm -hmm. you know it's not one size fits all like right you yeah. each type of overthinking or thought or you know whatever it is whatever the situation is the tool might not work for every single one right so you have multiple mm -hmm. that you can attempt to see if that supports and helps yeah for sure exactly and i need to actually start writing down all of my tools, coping tools. Mm -hmm. I have to physically write it down somewhere mm -hmm. so I can remember it. It's too much yeah. to just know it up here, but then not know which one yeah. to pull out in a moment. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in the – thanks to my therapist in the beginning, like we tried a lot of tools because I think mm -hmm. overthinking was like a big thing. Like that mm -hmm. kind of led to me actually like to do therapy too. Yeah. And so a lot of the beginning work was that. And – I remember like trying different things and like, oh, that didn't mm -hmm. work or like this didn't work on me. But then this did, right? Like I kept trying. I tried not to give up. But it's easy. Like yeah. I wanted to give up. Like, oh, like I wanted oh. to be the perfect student and be like the first first thing that was given to me, <laughs> homework or whatever. Like, I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, I can totally see that. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's all about like just finding what's best for you. And mm -hmm. I think – Absolutely. That's, it's never going to be perfect. I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm still mm. working on it. What's something or like what are maybe a couple of things that have really helped you mm. that really resonate with you? Yeah, I think like the why trail. So like, you know how we talked about like the overthinking, like spiraling, like you like keep mm -hmm. going, like keep going down this spiral of like, oh, then this will lead to this and this will happen and this will mm -hmm. happen and this will happen. So like what for that, like. I would like just add like a little kid, like a toddler when they ask a preschooler, like, why, why that? Mm -hmm. Why, why would that happen? Why, why? Like I would ask myself why, like, mm -hmm. like if I was worried about a relationship, then I would be like, like if it was like something very like my overthinking tendencies were like telling me like, mm -hmm. oh, like this is going to end or like they're not going to, they're going to be mad at me and I'll keep saying mm -hmm. why. And then I'll answer that and then I'll say why to that again. And then I'll like, keep answering mm -hmm. or keep asking myself why until I can't answer. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. like that's that doesn't make sense. And then the other one is like what I sh shared. Like I like imagine it's kind of like a little bit of meditative too, right? Like I imagine like the stream and like this tree like floating over the stream, and then I put my thoughts, mm. like reframe them in a way like that they're just yeah. thoughts, and I'm gonna put it the thoughts that I don't want to come back. I'll put it on a leaf, watch the leaf fall on the stream, and then say goodbye to it. I love and if that. it comes again, another leaf goes, you know, like it's okay. I love we it. just keep <laughs> dropping leaves. <laughs> Endless supply of leaves in here. Right? Okay? <laughs> right. Well, you know, I heard, I've heard like the wave one, like the, mm -hmm. have you ever heard like the wave, like put your thoughts on a wave? But like, it comes on back. The ocean. Yeah. That was exactly what I told my <laughs> therapist. I was like, it comes back. So I don't like that one. 
<laughs> yeah, because waves go in, but they come out. And they, and they come go back. in and they yes. come out. <laughs> yes. So like, I like that the stream. Was, I think, yeah, I think those are like my two biggest one out of all the ones I tried. And of course, journaling is a big thing for me. Like I like it, but sometimes it's hard for me to be motivated to sit down and like journal and write. Mm-hmm. And so I sometimes tend to like talk it out with people too that I trust. Um, yeah. Especially like, you know, like again, right, the people pleasing, the overthinking tendencies. Like I think therapy has really helped to me like safely externally process, like feel safe about it too. Like, you know, I'm talking yeah. to a professional and I don't have to worry about their reaction. Or right. Like, <laughs> safe yeah. place. So, yes, exactly. So yeah, those are kind of – that's some of my tools in my toolbox that have been the most mm. effective for me. I love it. I love it. I feel what like for you? me – yeah, I was going to say I feel like for me – the most effective thing on a day-to-day like overthinking level is probably just to like hmm, challenge and reframe my thought and then if I really Mm. can't like that's the first step if I can't do that then I will try um journaling Mm -hmm. and talking to somebody and if I can't do that and it still doesn't help then I move on to like physically exerting myself. If that doesn't work, then I just straight up distract myself and I'm like, okay, this is just something I have to wait out at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I love how like you're you in, in those situations, like you don't like blame yourself, right? Like you're giving yourself grace. You're trying new things. You're trying different things. Mm-hmm. It's so easy well, to be like frustrated. Yeah. What? I say? said, well, now, now I'm not yeah, well, now. blaming myself. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I was at there at that, like, at one point too, like, you know, heart rate increasing, overthinking like crazy. Like you said, the anxious energy building up. I'm like on the mm-hmm. ground, like spiraling, you know. Yeah. But you're mm-hmm. right. Like, there are certain things I feel like that overthinking can be a cause of that's more deeply rooted, like what I shared mm-hmm. from my story, right? Like, goes Absolutely. all the way to the ch- – sometimes to the childhood and how you were yeah. raised in the environment. You know, I didn't even, like, realize it when I was coming up with the story and thinking about this, but that's so true. And now that you mention that, like, I'm remembering – I think I think my mom does that. Like, I think yeah. my mom is an overthinker because I can literally see her gears turning. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, like, she's just so – overly thoughtful Mm -hmm. of how people might perceive things and like it's a strength of hers i really do Mm -hmm. think that it's a strength but i think it can also be a trauma response like we talked about previously Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our trauma responses can turn into being strengths but it doesn't mean they're also not a trauma response and i'm remembering like this was something that my mom didn't just encourage but like actively taught me how to do Mm. she actively taught me how to think about how my actions would affect her and other people around us and Mm -hmm. what the consequences would be. And like, she actively taught me how to be more cautious, intentional and like walk on eggshells. And like, again, Mm -hmm. like it was coming from a place of like, Hey, this is a good thing to be able to do Mm -hmm. in the population and like the people and the culture and the company that we were in. But at the same time, you know, it's like a scale, right? Yeah, You can tip the scale into unhelpful territory of now I'm just paralyzed, unable to make decisions and constantly doubting myself because of the overthinking. But at its healthiest, it can serve us. It can be helpful for us to be thoughtful and intentional and like caring Mm -hmm. of other people's feelings and empathetic. Mm -hmm. It's It's a balancing act. It's. I agree. I think my experience was intergenerational. Like, I feel like just hearing about my mom's childhood, sometimes when she shares that with me, like, I hear that too. Mm -hmm. Like, her mother, my grandmother, like, experienced that. And I think it's just – I think it's the cycle, right? You When when you're in a household where emotions are not acknowledged, mental health is not acknowledged, so there's, you know, burst of negative emotions or emotionally charged households, Mm -hmm. then that – response to that could be overthinking, right? Like you're tiptoeing and making sure the other people in the household don't get emotionally charged or negatively, like, yeah. you know, have negative emotions. So you're, you're, you have to be an overthinker to mm-hmm. avoid those negative emotions. And then it just keeps going yeah. and then it cycle. 
Exactly. Wow, that was really insightful. I hadn't even thought about that really until you brought it up. I mean, it's just See, one, I'm learning with you. One, <laughs> one speculation. I could be wrong, but I feel like that's kind of my take on it. For it definitely like I just I just feel like I've sh- a lot from my experience and other people I've talked to from the South Asian community, like overthinking is something that people experience. You know, like mm-hmm. I think it has to do with the coll- collective culture not acknowledging mental health and emotions from the get-go mm. might be really probably also a collective culture encouraging people pleasing encouraging mm. especially mm. for and this might be a little bit too general but especially for like women mm-hmm. encouraging being thoughtful of consequences thoughtful of right. other people's feelings right right overthinking could be a person who's trying to be the best people pleaser they can be Mm-hmm. Also, my tend to also overthink like crazy. Yeah, right. To be the best people pleaser. Yeah. <laughs> what a trippy wow. statement. <laughs> I know, right? It's <laughs> just like all just all going crazy in my head. All these ideas and thoughts. I know it's like really coming I'm together. Wow. About overthinking, y'all. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not overthinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> she says, but she totally is. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, if you are, you have your tools now. Right. Your coping toolbox. I always imagine myself like Bob the Builder, like my toolbox, like carrying it around <laughs> with me. I love that. It's so me, cute. No matter where I am, right? Work, home, mm, not I like home, it. somewhere else. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to pull out my tools. <laughs> Michelle the Builder. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Shall we wrap up our podcast today? Yes. Um, All right. So you want to wrap us up, wrap it up for us, Anusha? Yes. Here we go. Yes. So that's the end of our podcast for today. As always, if our podcast has resonated with you and you'd like to share your story with us or ask questions, you can reach us at TalkSouthAsianToMe at Gmail. Or you can find us on all the socials at the handle at Talk South Asian to me. Yes. We appreciate <laughs> all the support. Then. Yes. Yes. We will see you all at the next podcast. Woo-hoo. Letter P. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was such a low. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I know. No, it's exciting. <laughs> the next letter will be P. Mm-hmm. I wonder what it will be. I wonder. I'm, just something I we wonder. probably said a lot. Mm, hint, hint. Maybe not. Hint, hint. Maybe not. We might surprise wink, wink. you. We might surprise you. We'll see. <laughs> All, All right. right, then. Bye, everyone. Bye.